hey, this is uh, Shop44, and I'm just here to give you another tutorial video. Well, today we're going to cover, um, I'm going I'm to go over the Code Manager thing again, because I, 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 found, I found that some people don't know, like, how to use Code Manager, or how to use the codes very well. So I'm going to go over that briefly, and then I'm going to go into uh, how to replace sound. Replacing sounds isn't that hard once you get the hang of it. It really isn't that hard. And I was just on here, on the Brawl Vault, and I just noticed this. They finally got Mega Man to look like he should look. I mean, there's like three different versions of Mega Man. There's like this one, there's that one I reviewed over Ness, and then there's that other one which I haven't reviewed yet. I, for I actually forgot about that one. I think it's called Mega Man 3. Um, I don't know. This was okay at first, but, but really, I, I it just looked too much like a recolor of Ness. There it is. Um, yeah, he's like, he's like just the right height, and the body's body, the body is shaped is just right, you know. I wonder if the uh, PSA will work well with it or not. I'll have to ch test it out. I'll put that in my next ball hack review. So anyway, um, it's about Code Manager. Let me just get to Code Manager for you. And to get Code Manager, some people call it Cheat Manager. I don't know if it's if that's the same thing, but it might be. Go to Brawl Vault, go to Resources, it's kind of a tiny thing, but it says Resources. And you see Code Manager, just download that. And then, um, once you have it, put it in a folder, and then you'll notice that, um, it's like just a blank file. What we gotta do is just type in Super Smash Bros. I think it's Brothers, actually. Brawl, U, S, you know, in like in colons like that, and then you gotta have R S B E O one in the game ID, or for European or not European, uh, P A L users, you gotta put in R S B P instead of E, but E is for uh, Americans. So you put that in for the game ID. You put the full name of the game with. U.S. in the parentheses. I, I'm guessing you put E-U-R in parentheses, like capitalized, and for a uh, like PAL version. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Let me make sure I got this right. Oh, whoops, that's new Super Mario Bros. Um, yeah. Oh, here we go. Game name. Uh, actually, I guess it doesn't matter if you spell it. If you like type out the game name correctly, I guess you can put nothing in the game name. Just make sure the game ID is correct. R S B E. O one or RS RSBP for pal, uh, and you had to have that. You had to have that O one at the end. I don't know why, but um, basically, um, for codes, we want to have our um, if it says unknown codes, and like don't worry about it. Just don't have that checked. Sometimes that happens. Like if you get it from some other person and the it didn't, didn't identify it or something. Um, but yeah, I like to just have unrestricted, unrestricted pa pause camera tags and replays, uh, infinite length replays. Uh, can start with c you can start the game with one player and no tripping. The file patch code only needs to be on if you're using Gecko OS. If you're using Revolution, you don't need it on. In fact, if you try to use it, the file patch code with Revolution, it might not work because Revolution can't handle this many code. Because a file patch code is a giant thing of code, so don't use file patch code on Revolution. Just use the template called file patch code that's on my Revolution tutorial. So yeah, you open up Code Manager and just just you can you can find these codes on uh, just just go to Google and go to Ocarina um, USB Gecko Brawl and new and then like. It says geckocodes.org, and then you know just. I think I did this in another video actually, but some people had trouble understanding this or something. I don't know. You just go here on the geckocodes.org and find the game, and there you go. A uh, bunch of random stuff. Um, there should be like the ones like let's see, camera. Huh. That's weird. Why isn't unrestricted camera on this list? 
I guess I'll put them in the description then. I'll put the codes in the description that you need there. I'll just do that since you guys can't find it on that website. It's really strange. Um, anyway. So, after you do that, you export to GCT, and for some reason it has to put it in, like, a certain um, folder or file or something. Actually, it can only put it in, like, a drive with the folder code, so just do that and then copy it out of there, and then go to your, uh, go to your SD card, go to, and make a new folder called Codes. And then put um, the codes folder in. That could be codes file. The code file needs to be called rspe01.gct. So you have your codes in here. You set them up. Set them up in here. If you want to add a new one, just click add code and just type in the, type in the name. And then click on it. And then on the side right here, it says code contents. And you type in the code or whatever it is, or you copy and paste it, which is what I would do. And then, if you want to get rid of it, you know, just right click it, whatever. And then, after you make it, make the code, you gotta click on this button that says "Store Modifications," or else it will just get mad at you and be like, "Do you want to store modifications?" And you'll have to say yes. And anyway, um, and you ex you just save the TXT so you can look at it later, and you export the GCT. And I had this program that can edit GCTs and turn them back into TXTs, but what happens is, is it, it doesn't know what the codes are. It says unknown codes when you open it back up. So that's where unknown, unknown codes comes from. Is it like you need to you turn a GCT back into a TXT, and it can't identify what the codes are? Because if they're like special ones, like this one probably is for is like so the sandbag doesn't appear on certain stages that are like the Wi-Fi ones. Because people like to modify Wi, like the most modified stages are Wi-Fi and file destination, so um, that's why I can't identify what the, what kind of code it is because it's for it's like a special kind of code. Anyway, um, that's all we know you know for codes, and um, just make sure that um, when you uh, go to your like your Revolution folder that you have all the stuff I gave you in the zip file on my tutorial. Just um, you know, make sure you have a like a code handler dot bin and some and like it says you should have like an Arduino XML somewhere or something. It sh it should be there. Like just turn it on and on the on the menu and Revolution and it'll, it'll work. Okay, so back, it, on, on the on the sound effect sound effect replacing. Sound effect replacing for a long time it was really hard. You had to you had to do a bunch of hexing and you had to know exactly what you were doing. It was really hard just for like to do one sound, but but now it's not that hard. It's really simple, but people still you people like like you'll find like hacks from the past that still have hex packets that you got to use them, but hex packets are easy to put in. So it's not hard to put in the hex stuff if people use the hex method. It's just hard for them to do it, to like set it up for themselves. It's hard for that to happen. But if you, if, but it's easy to put them in if they give you a hex packets. If you don't know what hexing is, what you do is you open up, like go to the, you know, ball disk, get the sound file. It's called Smash Bros underscore sound dot b r s a r, and um, you just open it with. This thing called HXD hex editor. You Google HXD and you'll find it. It's like the best hex editor. Then just go to View and then Byte Group Size 4 so it looks better. And then, um, like, it will give you instructions. Like, this one says, it'll tell you, like, what, um, hex packet to go. Wait, 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 okay. You'll go to search. Uh, it'll say go to search, go to go to, and then you'll type in like. And, uh, you won't type it in, and then you'll copy and paste a certain um, code to uh, to go to some area. So let's see. I want to go to zero six five three whatever number, and it would go there. It would go right to that pus that spot in the file. And then what would happen is I would go find this. Um, the hex packet it says for me to use. Uh, it 
tell me that there. Like that one says it needs to be. It, it's like named for like like the uh, thing it needs to be. So you just put in what you see, uh, num the number that you see right there for the name of the hex file. And you go there, and that's where you need to start. And then, like, it gives you the stuff for it. You copy it, and then you push Control B, and it just writes over it over that stuff you need to write over. And then you just go to the next packet with this one, and then you like just repeat it until you got all the, all the stuff replaced in the uh, sound file that's for Brawl. And then once you add the sound file, like, replaced with the stuff you want, just copy it and put it in the, uh, in the sound file, like, private Wii app, RSB, PF, and then sound, paste it in there. If you get a file, like, when you save it, if you get a file called Smash Bros underscore sound dot b r s a r dot b a k. That's a backup file that the hex editor made because it likes to do that. Just ignore it. Don't use it. It's just a backup so that in case you want to revert back to when you didn't replace anything, I guess. But um, it's just a backup file, so don't don't use that one because it won't work. Just use the uh, one that doesn't have the d dot dot b a k at the end. And uh, the second method which is not the hex packet method, but the much better method. <laughs> it reminds me of that Nostalgia Critic joke. If you guys have seen that Nostalgia Critic video, uh, I mean that video, uh, review, where <laughs> like, it's like the recent one. It's like Care Bears in Wonderland, and it's like, <laughs> they're like, you know, this reminds me of that. I mean, you know, this is kind of like that Alice in Wonderland movie I mean, from Disney, and they're like, you mean that, Disney, that you mean like that one, that one? No, like, okay, I think, I think it went like this, and like, like the, the, you know, it's, this looks a lot like the much better version, a uh, Disney version of this movie, the Alice in Wonderland movie, and they're like, you mean that one? It's like, no, the much better version! <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> I've never seen the, uh, top Tim Burton one, but it, it, that was just it's a great joke that they put in there, like, the much better one! Okay, so... Okay, so the other method is to use this program that you can... I think you can get it off. Yep, there it is. You can get uh, this this program. Uh, S-A... I don't know why it's named this, but it's like S-A-W-N-D-Z version 0 0.051. And I don't know how to use the newer version, which, like which works kind of even easier, has an e even easier method. It's green instead of red, and it's, it's, zero el it's number 011, and um, it's, it's just looks, it, I don't understand it because, um, I mean, this one has got the slot, the, like, it, this one is under, underst understanding to me. This one says, this one, like, red one has uh, two slots for each data offset, but this one just has group ID, collection ID, wave ID, and I don't know what to do with that because it just says because because it doesn't say character group offset, it doesn't label them correctly, and I don't know um how to use this one like I use the old one, so. I just use the old one for uh, whenever I want to use uh, like if like this is what you do for the old one. The old one, um, if someone will give you like like here's like the voice sound effects. It will give like give you a bunch of wave files, and 